Um, given the either esteemed or dubious position of being the last speaker of the day, I, I like to quote the uh, great Senator Mo Udall of Arizona who said in the 80s, everything has been said, but not everyone has said it. So I get to do uh, the summary, and I, I, I want to start uh, just to tell you how pleased that uh, the concept of value-based insurance design, or VBIT, has been discussed in some detail. Uh, when Mike Chernu and I coined the term, we did call it VBID as opposed to value-based benefit designs, because you could say VBIT as opposed to VBIT, and that's the, that is the real reason. And to hear Dana and, and, and other people, Amitab and Josh, just say VBIT is just very thrilling to us that you actually know what that is, so that's very exciting. If you do want to learn more about the concept, uh, you could Google VBID, because we perhaps passed vehicular born incendiary device about seven years ago. So it'll take you right to the University of Michigan Center for Value-Based Insurance Design, where we think about these issues uh, all the time. But I do think the central theme was uh, very much kicked off by Ann Peters early on, and she described this idea of personalized medicine or the idea that uh, against one size fits all. I have called this idea a clinical nuance in my attempt to explain the concept of getting away uh, from one-size-fits-all, benefit design, payment reform, guidelines uh, to non-clinicians and non-sophisticated audiences like we have here today. And uh, the tenets of clinical nuance are basically two and very straightforward. One is that medical services differ in the benefits they, that they provide. And uh, having talked now to over 50,000 AARP members, I could tell you that people who are not sophisticated understand that some drugs are more important than others, uh, some diagnostic tests are more important than others, and some doctor visits, in fact, are more important than others. Uh, so much so that one of my favorite anecdotes is a woman I met in Boca Raton who had 12 physicians, and most of you know who know Boca Raton. Uh, seeing a physician is the number one uh, hobby there in that part of Florida. She has a Christmas party just for her doctors. And she told me that even though she loved all her doctors equally, she did understand that one had more impact on her health than others. And once I had that conversation, I really believed that we could push this VBID concept forward. Uh, the second, though, ties very much to the field of diabetes, and that has been an intense clinical uh, area of interest of mine, is that nuance goes just beyond the fact that insulin may be important than uh, asthma drugs or non-sedating antihistamines or Viagra or other types of things. But medical services also differ by the patient getting it, when they get it in the course of disease, by whom and where. And the VBID concept and a lot of these issues, whether it's demand side or supply side, as Amitab talked about, really tie to the fact that a high value service in one patient in one setting may be exactly uh, a low value service provided by the exact same provider. And I use this example uh, in colorectal cancer screening that I have argued very strongly that people should be paid to get a colonoscopy if they are a first degree relative of a colon cancer sufferer. And the gastroenterologist or the surgeon should be paid a high premium. But if you're a 25 year old who's motivated by Katie Couric's Today Show colonoscopy uh, with a no family history for colon cancer, uh, the physician should not be paid for performing that test and the patient uh, should be fined $500 for taking her mother's appointment. So this idea of nuance has actually led uh, to a, a lot of these things and I applaud uh, United and Humana and Aetna and the large employers who've been the driving force to get a, out of this one-size-fits-all approach from both benefit design and payment to one that has uh, clinical nuance. But in terms of the uh, two last takeaway points, as much as we like to talk about demand side and consumer engagement initiatives as being the major lever, and I tend to call the demand side discussion as jelly, I really do believe that where the action is moving forward is with these supply side initiatives, and Josh Benner talked about these and others, in terms of how we're paying uh, physicians. And I call the, the uh, supply side peanut butter. And I think it's unbelievable to me in one of the few people who thinks about the beauty of peanut butter and jelly together as opposed to them separately, that if you look around the country, incentives for physicians are not, not only are they not aligned with their patients, they're often going in the wrong direction. And what I mean by that is uh, my flagship uh, medical service has nothing to do with this meeting on diabetes is a diabetic eye exam, which is an ir irrefutable quality metric in every program anywhere in the country, public or private payer. It turns out that um, while I am provided a substantial financial bonus to get my patients with, diabetic, with diabetes get their uh, annual eye exams, as private employers in the state of Michigan go to full replacement in a consumer-directed high-deductible health plan, 
they are now paying four times more out of pocket to get their eyes examined now than they were last year. And while I talk to seeing the bobble nod, how unbelievably crazy that is, when I have the good fortune to say that to a CFO of a Fortune 50 company, it's not that they're surprised, they are embarrassed by the fact you didn't send someone on the peanut butter side and provide a, a equally strong disincentive on the jelly side. And the last message is all of you come from these multiple disciplines and multiple things, is as this healthcare system is being transformed before our eyes, please remember the beauty of the peanut butter and jelly sandwich because it gives that example of the end product being greater than either of the parts alone. And as we move forward, you might say, neat idea as described by uh, a Republican Congress meeting link said to me, oh, you're the guy who wants to buy more of the good stuff and less of the bad stuff. And I said, if you could summarize 20 years of an academic career and hundreds of academic papers that we've put out, I said, if you could crunch it into that pithy sound bite, I'll take it. Which kind of shows that we're a little bit unusual, uh, Mike Chernow and I, as academics. But if you ask, why doesn't that consumer directed health plan uh, cover that diabetic eye exam before the deductible, it's because the law does not allow it. If you go to traditional Medicare and say, I want to create a cost sharing program for a diabetic eye exam to be less expensive, than a non-diabetic eye exam, you can't because the law does not permit it. So many of you come from organizations with lots of strength, lots of advocacy, lots of voice. Uh, I think the more we could come together and get behind this idea that Dr. Peters made so clear that we've got to leave the one-size-fits-all approach and get to one that has more clinical nuance, I think we could reach uh, the two, I think, most ambitious goals of healthcare transformation. One, and most important, improve uh, clinical and patient-centered outcomes for all of us in America, but also be cognizant of the fiscal situation that we're in. And without clinical nuance, in my opinion, if we start seeing these movements just to cut costs, uh, we will see Americans harmed in a systematic and very negative way. So with two minutes to spare, Dana, I will turn it over to you. Oh, thank you all thank very you. much.